Okay, classes. Actually, skills first. Okay, so falcons. Let's do let's do a maximal. Let's see if we can maximize falcons. What happened there? Oh, we got All right. Uh, falcons and falcons. Let's do it. You carefully feed tidbits to your bird while she rests on your glove. You practice walking around and holding the bird attached to you by a short length to ensure she doesn't fly away. You occasionally swing her around your head and throw her at passers-by. You practice whirling a lure overhead for your bird to catch before calling her back to your hand. Alright, guys, if you say I'm going to you need a hundred falcons, and I'm going to do a hundred falcons, okay? Make your minds up. Oh, dear. My lady, your father wishes to speak to you. He says it's urgent. Admittedly, he had my, his head up my skirt at the time, but who am I to argue? Fine, I'm coming. You find your father standing over a map of the coastline, his face grave. Ships have been, ships have been sighted on the approach to... from Shandia. Shandia? Not trade ships, this is a war fleet. What? Within a week, they will be in Novan waters. Within two, they could reach the capital. Then we will fight to defend ourselves. You can try to use the treasury funds to hire additional soldiers, but it may be difficult at short notice. Uh, so, should we recruit soldiers or not? I don't know what you guys are talking about. I got bored with that conversation and we moved on. So, we going to recruit soldiers or not? Uh, two for recruit, one for don't. Anyone else want to voice an opinion? Okay. Um. Okay, let's go for a re recruit that seems to be slightly ahead. Fine, we'll do that. You will need to draw up a naval strategy for our ships to carry out. Oh dear lord. You could choose to act as Admiral, Admiral and lead the feat into person, but the danger to you will be very great. Unless you think your personal skills will make the difference, I would strongly advise against it. Oh, there's no, there is, there's no two ways about here, okay? She is completely thick when it comes to naval strategy, so she's staying in the capital. No, there's too much to do here. I can't go to sea. Besides, my magical girl costume would get all wet. Alright, look at mood. Um, they're all about the same. Don't particularly care at this point. Um, let's visit the treasury. There we go. Classes, actually skills. Do we actually need anything of this lot? And um, otherwise, I'm just going to pick two at random. Well, I think we're at the end of the game here. We're also about quarter an hour over, so. Girlie, could you just say your opinion once, please? Okay. So, Girlie for dogs, Melody for history, archery. What the hell? History and archery. Let's do those. Uh, so, that is weapons and... History, there we go. So, archery and Noban history, there we go. You learn about different styles and sizes of bows long, short, and recurve, those to bend to one side, and those have a strange little vein down the back. You learn about caring for your bow, how to store it between uses string and unstring, and check for damage or wear. You also learn that you should never fire a bow without an arrow within its string. You read about the history of your domain. Hundreds of years ago, Nova was the center of a great empire spanning the length of the western coast as well as a few island territories. Over time, your influence has reigned. 
Danger on the high seas. Har. Ships close on each other, angling into range. The Shadjans have half again as many troops as you do. It don't look as promising. The eventual outcome is not in your favor. Har. The Novan ships are sunk or scattered as the Shanjian forces press towards landfall. Many good soldiers are lost today, and Nova's troubles have not ended. Since you have failed to repel the invasion, the Shanjian feet will soon land, and their troops will begin to progress towards your capital city. <laughs> your remaining soldiers will hold them off as long as possible, of course. But the main strength of your military has been exhausted. Nova's future looks bleak. And we have an option of playing with toys. Well, let's play with toys while the world burns. There we go. Alright, skills. Simon's such a loser, except for pilot voices. <laughs> and that be half the battle. It be har. <laughs> okay, is there anything actually useful in the upcoming thing? We've maxed out magic, and we've maxed out swords, and... Um, you know what? There's still a bit of presence or something like that. And, um, dogs. Let's do presents and dogs. There we go. Just for a bit of a nostalgia trip. Yeah, because... There we go. Presents and dogs. Whatever you pick is wrong. Thank you, Fat Frog. You practice on watching people and willing them to feel your gaze on them. Inevitably, they will be drawn towards you. You train your dog to search for hidden treats, items, and people. You go for walks with your dog in the woods and invite him to fetch anything interesting that he can find. The invasion of Nova is proceeding. Your coastline is under Shanjian control. Soldiers have marched through villages, trampling fields and frightening citizens. Occasionally frightening fields and trampling citizens. A diplomatic delegation from Shanjia has requested access to the castle to discuss terms. Most likely for your surrender. You lack the strength to hold off their armies and surrendering now will save many lives. It seems that you have no choice. You prepare yourself as best you can to meet with the representatives from Shangia. You expected diplomats and a military representative, a general or an admiral. You did not expect the handsome man decked with jewels who now stands before you. A man announced, your services, serv announced by your services, Togami, king of Shangia. Is he really their king? Why would a king come all the way here? And he's a lumen too. Oh dear, look at that face. I've got to do this, I'm sorry guys, I've got to do this. My dear young lady, how difficult this must be for you. So much responsibility at such a tender age. Don't pretend to be my friend while you're killing my people. Temper, temper, princess. After all... I am here to save your people. War befits no one, don't you think? Such a terrible way, sister. Better to settle things in a civilized manner. A contest. A game, so to speak. With Nova as the stakes. Should I win? Then your domain will submit and accept me as overlord with no further resistance. Should I lose, then my army will leave your domain in peace and shed no more blood. What sort of game? It is well known that Nova is ruled by Lumens. As it happens, I too possess the powers of Lumen and a certain tattoo on my left buttock. I propose a formal duel, my powers against yours. The winner takes control of Nova, the loser 
dies. Your king, by your rules, for my life? That doesn't seem fair to me. The rules of formal dueling have been passed down for centuries and must be upheld. It is important we do this by the ancient codes. Why should I? If you refuse, then the war will continue. I'll sweeten the deal. If you meet me in a formal Lumen challenge, I'll call off the invasion, even if I win. Really? I swear it by the gods. Nova will be free and safe. Why take that risk? You're winning the war. It's not your land that I want. It's your crystal. It won't work for you. How little you know. Under the right circumstances, residence can be changed. To gain your power, I am willing to wager my own. Shall we begin? I can sense his power. It's so strong and throbbing. I've learned everything I possibly could, but he's at least as good as I am. I don't like this, but what choice do I have? Okay, what should we do, guys? We can accept his terms, we can offer a marriage alliance, we can offer give him our power, or we can refuse outright. Kill him dead. Well, just once, please, okay? It's only polite. So kill, marriage, accept. Um, I think everyone's going towards, a little bit towards kill. Let's do kill. Accept his terms. Then I must. Tagami explains the rules of formal dueling to you, including a carefully inscribed circle of wards which will contain the effects of any powers you wield, protecting by standards from danger. Then it's time to begin. Ooh. Ooh, nice effects. New trade attacks. One spell sensed and countered by another, reserving your strength as much as possible. It might almost be exciting if your life wasn't on the line. Sense magic success, yes. You need to end this quickly before his experience allows him to come up with a trick you can't defeat. He's used to dealing with magical attacks. He might not be used to expecting a physical one, perhaps if you rushed him. But could you take him off guard? Up close, he couldn't use his fancy spells. But what would you do then? You still have to use magic to win. You can't just grab him and kiss him. No, you can't just grab him and bang his head against the floor. Perhaps you could focus your power into the shape of a sword and attack him with that. Or maybe if you distract him somehow, you could cast a spell that he couldn't block. Okay, guys. Magic Sword or Dazzle? Magic Sword or Dazzle? The Sword, Simon! The Sword! 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 Oh, sword! Sword! Ah, sword! Motes of shimmering moonlight coalesce into a weapon in your hand. You first lunge, he dodges, rolling to the ground, but you recover quickly and strike again. In the confined space of the warded circle, there is nowhere for him to run. The final strike of your Moonblade parts his head from his shoulders. You have won. And we can still play with our dolls. Good grief. You spend the week holed up alone in your room with your favourite toys. It's childish, but you feel better. Is this game not over? <laughs> oh dear. I thought we'd won. Mood. Outfit. Uh. Okay, so anyone got a pro um a, a, an outfit they like most? Um. Yeah, anything that anybody particularly likes? Hunt coat. One for hunt coat. 
You may never leave. No, it seems that way, doesn't it? Alright, so... Two for Hunt Coat. Two for... Magical Girl. Uh, Hunt Coat looks like this. Teddy ho! I, I'm slightly leaning towards Magical Girl, so let's do the Magical Girl one. There we go. I've no idea. It's probably the pervert in me, but there you have it. All right. Okay. So, we are going to make uh, Girly Simmers happy by maxing dogs. And... Just for tradition's sake, let's get presents up as high as possible as well. I don't think it really matters at this point. There we go, we'll do those. Alright. Okay. 98.6, would you believe it? You imagine things that you want to happen in the near future, and then convince yourself and others that those things will happen. You train your dog to perform silly tricks on command. You have nothing more to learn about dogs. There we go. Max dogs. Once you've defeated the king of Shanji and Adrul, the invasion was meant to be over. In practice, it's not quite so easy to expel a foreign army from your lands, especially when the leadership is falling apart. The remaining Shanji and generals seem surprisingly eager to go home and left without a fuss, but a large number of soldiers have broken rank and run amok, looting and pillaging their way through Nova just for fun. A number of royal holdings have been damaged and valuables stolen. Not only do you lose them, but you have to pay for repairs. With so many renegades on the loose, Nova seems likely to have severe bandit problems for years to come. When Tagami Dun died, he left behind a crystal, a mauve lumen crystal, with glimmers of pink where it catches the eye. Such a pretty bauble, with from such an ugly event. Since Nova won the duel, this crystal is now yours by your rightful prize, but you have no idea what to do with it. For now, you lock it away in the royal treasury. Okay. Any preference here? Uh, play with dolls. Flowers. Um. Ah, oh, the hell. Let's play with dolls. There we go. Alright. That's made her sad. We'll do flowers next time. Skills. Is there anything... Yeah, I know, girly, don't worry. Uh, is there anything that you think is in any use here whatsoever? I'm kind of hoping the game is over because, you know, we're about half an hour over here. History, foreign and world. Let's do that. Classes, history, foreign affairs, history, world history. There we go. <laughs> You could do medicine, it's not useful for the game, but she could be a doctor. You study the relationship of Nova and its nearest neighbours. The borders have been mostly peaceful in recent years, except for the problems with Ixion to the south. However, trouble may be brewing in Pyrus as well, just as long as Mzumba is safe. You look at a globe of the world, reading names and places so distant you can't remember ever hearing about them like the next town over, and other areas left blank because no explorer venturing there has ever returned. Like Mzumba! Time has slipped by so quickly. Only two weeks remain before your birthday celebration and your official coronation as queen. Have you done enough to build a stable Nova? It is traditional for the palace to provide entertainment and refreshment for the common people when new monarch is crowned. It's a rare opportunity for the poor of the land to dine like nobles. The size and scope of any such feast depends on what expense the royal treasury is willing to bear. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm totally agreeing with you guys here. Mazumba is possibly the best named town in the world. In fact, any world. Hmm... Okay. Respectable feast. Respectable feast. Grand.
Okay, so... Okay, I think they're slightly more respectable than anything else. Let's go for that one. I'm sure we can afford to give everyone in the city some bread and sausage and a bit of cake. Uh, let's do something willful and pressured. Just to balance things out a little bit. I'll do that one. There we go. Okay. Right. Okay, damn it. I'm I'm maxing presence. And I'm gonna do medicine as well. I've no real idea why, but I want to do it. Okay, so Royal Demeanor, Presence and Medicine Herbs. Let's do herbs. You organize a group of castle staff and coach them through carrying out a complicated multi-stage task. Nothing more to learn about presents. Oh, I didn't read that one, sorry. Mm -hmm. The castle is buzzing with preparations from your upcoming coronation. Ministers press you with details for your favourite colours and flowers and so on. <laughs> No, we can't rename Iris, but <laughs> I have an idea for a build that I want to do on Iris, and I'm getting the feeling it's going to be called Mazumba now. You really can't see the point of wasting time worrying about decorations when there's so much else to worry about. Others are more interested in the subject of your marriage, but you think boys are icky. Whoever you, whomever you decide to marry will be elevated to the highest ranks of the nobility, which could mean a major shift in the balance of power. Therefore, everyone is talking about the cop candidates, even though you're under no obligation to marry So Young. So Young is probably relieved. Talaris, the Duke of Sedna, is one option. Certainly expressed interest in marrying you earlier. Your union would be would bring stronger ties to the, day, the domain of Tallahassee and improve the situation along the Alath border. Then there's Banyan, the Duke of Marie, a powerful and eligible notable who's only about ten years older than you. Then there's Kevin, the Earl of Io. Although he's only an Earl, his family connections could make him a p politically useful. Then there's Adair, the eventual Duke of Alath, though at twelve he's only a child. She's only 14. I mean, come on. At least he's almost old enough to understand the concept of romance. And some people think you ought to marry Gwinnell's half-brother, Anciet, who hasn't even turned nine yet. <laughs> There's only two or three minor earls around the age of 20 who might be passable alternatives. And of course, you could decide to ignore noble traditions entirely and marry a commoner, if you were prepared to deal with the uproar. While you need to marry eventually, you're still very young. You could put this decision off until later. However, a clear succession contributes to the stability of your domain. Are you leaning towards any option? Alright, go on then. You guys pick. You guys pick. Banyan. Banyan. Adair. No, a bit late's not an option. Okay, there's a few more Banyans than there, and anything else, so let's do Banyan. There's no time to pursue that thought at the moment, but perhaps in future. Right. Yeah, it's a ten court. Boink. Right, I think this is going to be the last one. And... Tell you what, let's do a fallback career. Let's do a couple of lessons in medicine. Medicine, battlefield medicine, let's do that, there we go. You learn that wounds, even minor ones, should be washed as soon as possible to prevent dirt from growing under the skin. You learn that fever few can be used to reduce tension and heart and headaches. You learn that oil of clothes rubbed on the skin can relieve pain, particularly in teeth. At this time last year, you were celebrating your 14th birthday. You were in the school garden, surrounded by your friends. A teacher brought you tea and cakes, while a wealthy merchant's son wove a crown of flowers for your head. 
It didn't matter so much that you were a princess then, your title was something for the future. Maybe your peers would be duchesses or earls or the like someday, but not then. You were children. Your parents could not attend on that actual day, but they did send you wonderful gifts for you, some for you and some for you to share. And a week later they came for a visit and your mother took you through with her through the countryside in a splendid carriage. It was the last time you would ever see her. You wonder if, wherever she is, she can see you now. You are 15 years old, a legal adult. You have worked and studied and suffered and prepared, and now the time has come. You kneel before the priestess, and barely hearing her words as she recites the blessings. She calls upon the gods to deliver peace, wisdom and prosperity to you, and through you, to all of Nova. And then she calls upon you for your oath of rulership. Will you guide and govern and protect the people to the best of your ability, according to law and custom? I will. Will you, to the best of your power, uphold the ideals of love, honor, justice, and mercy? I will. Now get on with this. This no, won't be the first person's head I've cut off. Lords and ladies assembled, I present to you your undoubted queen, who has sworn you her loyalty. Who will come and give homage? Will you do the same? You! You! Who? Who? To who? You who have come to give homage, will you do the same? One at a time, the head of each duchy approaches your throne and kneels to swear his or her service to you and to your heirs. People of Nova, I give to you Elodie, daughter of Fidelia, your true sovereign. What say you all? Long live the Queen! Long live the Queen! Long live the Queen! Sort off the Queen! Thank you, I will. I'm starting off straight away. Once his daughter was secure on her throne, Joslyn, and that's a weird name, Joslyn returned to his birthplace to focus on his duties as Duke of Calories. He was pursued by many women, but showed little interest in remarrying, directing them instead to his brother, the Duke of Mzumba. Following Elodie's victory over the Shanjun King, the public opinion of Lumens rose to a height that hadn't been seen in a hundred years. Young children would dress up and play at being magical kings and queens. Mzumba! Freed from the need for secrecy, the Duchess, Juliana, and the Priestess, Celine, were able to announce their shared magical powers and their love. At Elodie's prompting, the lovers pledged their devotion to each other in a private ceremony, after which Selina retired from the priesthood to accompany her wife to Ursul. After the failed invasion, relations with Shanjina remained tense. First come the recriminations and demands from the Queen of Shanjia, devastated by the death of her husband, which Elodie ignored. Next came the subtler approaches, which Elodie didn't notice. The quiet gratitude and offers of four alliances from ministers who were thrilled to see Tagami gone. Elodie ignored these two, well, possibly uh, the ones she noticed, which was just as well, since the next thing to arrive was the preserved head of one of those traitorous ministers, sent by the Queen of Shandia as a warning. There was no sign of war in the immediate future, but there was not likely to be alliance either. Elodie proposed marriage to, Mer to Banyan, the Duke of Marie, and was eagerly accepted. The marriage was a lavish affair, the groom showing himself off in the best possible romantic light. <laughs> After the wedding, matters were not always so rosy. The new king had his own political agenda, and maintaining her authority was a constant struggle for Elodie. It's a team effort, girlie. It's a team effort. As a lumen, it was Elodie's responsibility to defend Nova from monstrous threats. She decided that the monsters within the realm were every bit as dangerous as those outside, and thus set herself to the task of conquering the old forest. Each monster would have to be identified and carefully studied in order to defeat it without upsetting the balance. It would take many years to reach the heart of the forest, but Elodie was undaunted. And thus, Queen Elodie's legacy stretched into the future.
There we go. Let's have a quick look at the log. Oh, okay, that's a, that shows up on a different screen. All right. Oh, there you go, guys. Congratulations for helping me through that. That was fun. A nice short game. So, um, when I put this up, I will actually either, if I remember, I'll put the, uh, the log up um, somewhere that people can download it if they want, then you can see it. So, all right, I'm going to take a short break, and I will be back in five, ten minutes. Um, and then we're going to play some Agrarian Skies. We couldn't save Bryony. There were some things that we didn't do, you're right. And... Next... Yes, we're going to go into the nether. So hopefully I'll see some of you for that. Okay, I'll right, see you all in a little bit.